Some things are just classic. Some things don't know that they are classic. But for those who truly are, they really do become Welcome from Classic Work. I'm your host, Ethan Ewing, and today we're going to be talking about fire. If you can hear something very good is happening right now, it's raining. And it's the first time we've had a good rain in about, uh, about three weeks. And uh, since everything's nice and wet now, I'm going to show you how to build a, a Babington burner, some people call it, or a waste oil burner. And this here is for your blast forge for melting aluminum, bronze, uh, alloys of that nature. You can even melt cast iron with it if you get all your settings right. Uh, mine is a very small version though. It's not nothing that's just made for massive, massive volume. Uh, but it's a real, real good tool to have if for any home casters out there or foundry, you know, for a home shop. And it's a real, real simple design. I've seen a lot of them in books and on the internet and whatnot that they're very, very complicated. My design is very simple and it'll give you consistent, uh, it'll give you consistent fire. And uh, well, let's jump right into it and take a look at it and see what all you got now. Okay, this is all the parts you're gonna need for your waste oil burner. We'll start with the small stuff first. It's individual. This right here is a quarter inch to eighth inch reducer. You're gonna need one of those brass. And then this here is a custom piece that's a uh, piece of wire that has a knot tied in it. It's about an inch long. And those are your two kind of side pieces. The rest of them are assemblies. They're broken down in four parts. You have your air intake, or excuse me, you have your air intake, your fuel intake, then you have your base head and your afterburner. Now, the fuel intake is nothing but a piece of six inch quarter inch galvanized with a quarter inch ball valve and a quarter inch hose adapter. The air intake, the whole assembly is you're gonna have an inch and a quarter black iron cap that's got four bolts mounted all the way around in it. Uh, these here are five sixteenths I believe and no big deal you just drill those and then uh, uh, just tap them out and have your bolts through. One thing you will have to do though is, is drill a half inch hole to accept your quarter inch pipe. After that, you need a quarter to quarter uh, adapter, and then you're gonna need a quarter inch uh, screw valve and a quarter inch quick air coupler. The next thing you're gonna need is a custom piece right here, which is a quarter inch brass fitting. Now, this right here is a little bit tricky to make because the hole in the top, if you can see it, is uh, this 132nd, or for people out there using metric, it's 0.75 millimeters. And uh, it takes a special bit, a little, little bitty bit, to drill that. Other than that, that's the hardest part of the build is actually the airless assembly. Finally, you're gonna need a one and a quarter inch uh, black iron T. You don't have to use one and a quarter. You can use anything bigger than one and a quarter. You know, around that area, one and a half, two inch. As long as it's black iron, you will have to use black iron for this, definitely. Then finally is your afterburner, which is nothing but a piece of one and a quarter inch pipe about 10 inches long. Okay, now let's assemble this puppy. First thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, take your little uh, reducer here. Well, first thing you're gonna do is uh, you're gonna wanna drill a hole about an inch back from your front, uh, front half where your afterburner is gonna go. And uh, you wanna tap it with eight, eighth inch pipe tap to fit an eighth inch reducer. So stick that in there. Nothing to it. There shouldn't be. Alright. Tightened up. It doesn't have to be super duper tight because all this is gonna be loop. Next thing you're gonna want to do is uh, take your little piece of special wire and put that right in the top of your reducer. And I'll show you why this is important a little bit later, but just do that for now. And then put your assembly on top of it. Okay. 
Okay. Next thing you want to do is assemble your air intake. And it's just pretty simple. Just take your cap and screw it in from the back. It doesn't have to be super tight, it just has to be close. Let's get a little bit tighter. There we go. All right. And then lastly, you're gonna put your afterburner on. Which just goes right on the front. Simple, simple. Okay, and that is the assembled waste oil burner. Now we need to go through some setup and how this thing actually fires, so we'll do that next. Okay, now for setting up your oil stream, if you can see the hole right there in the center, that's what you're aiming for. Now you can see my little piece of wire up in there, it's just, just directly over the uh, reducer. Now what you're going to do is, is have your oil hooked up and I'll show you my oil set up. It's nothing but a propane tank that's been slightly modified for this. Now what you're going to do is, is just look to see where the oil is flowing. I'm going to turn it on and you can see it goes right over the hole and that's exactly what you want. If it's a little obscured, you'll have to fix it according to how your machine is set up. Now, that's what that little piece of wire is for. If you see the oil that's, that's dripping, it's dripping directly off the, uh, the uh, wire. If you didn't have that wire in there, uh, it would run down the sides of the tube, and I had that problem a long time ago, and I couldn't ever figure out what was wrong. So that's what the wire is for. And other than that, that's pretty much the basics. Uh, you will have to, I will show you one thing. If your oil is not dripping directly on your head, on the head of the, uh, the bushing there, uh, you'll have to uh, adjust your, your bolts that are holding your air intake. And, you know, just loosen them up and pull it back and forth until you get it lined up. And once you have that, you are good to go. That is the only setup that you have to do. So, uh, well, uh, well, I'm gonna, uh, let's see. I'm gonna hook up the air and do a test run and then we'll put the afterburner on it and see if I can get this thing to fire right. So, let's give it a shot. All right, so here we go. First thing you wanna do is turn your air on first. Slowly, and then turn your fuel on. right now. That's my biggest problem. It won't stay lit without an afterburner. Uh, something's wrong with my fuel regulation. As soon as we put the afterburner on, it'll work. So, turn it off. Alright. Let's go ahead and screw the afterburner on. And you'll really get to hear a pump then. test is good though. Everything seems to be working right. I got a backup for this one. It's going to shoot out a lot more flame. Okay, this time instead of instead of igniting it up here at the tip, we're going to ignite it through the air pockets and it's going to keep regulating itself. So here we go. Same process. Watch air slow. Add
pushed off of the tube. When this thing's correct, it won't smoke at all. Easy as that.